Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I love doing these. I find an article, something that catches my eye, and then I read it, give a little bit of my thoughts on it. Today I'll be talking about a new planet is now our closest neighbor. So this is from IO, IFL Science um, by Rosie McCall. And it has lots of links. It even has a little video on explaining things. And they do calculations on uh, Mercury and stuff like that. I'll begin reading now. The order of the planets is something most of us learn in school. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and until 2006, Pluto. So you would be forgiven of thinking, or for thinking that as Earthlings, our closest planetary neighbor is Venus. And in a way, you would be right. At its nearest, Venus approaches Earth closer than any other planet in the solar system. Likewise, its orbit is closer to our orbit than any other. However, in another sense, you would be wrong. At least that's the argument put forward in an article published in Physics Today. And there's a link. Like I said, this article has a lot of links, a lot of cool stuff in it. I'll continue. To identify our closest neighbor, engineers affiliated with NASA, Los Alamos National Observatory, and the U.S. Army Engineer Research Development Center built a computer simulation to calculate the average proximity of Earth to its three nearest planets, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, over a 10,000-year period. Because of the way the planets align during their respective orbits, the model shows that Earth spends more time nearer to Mercury than either Venus or Mars. In other words, Mercury is closer to Earth on average than Venus is because it orbits the Sun more closely, the author explains. Indeed, it's not just Earth. Further calculations suggest that all seven planets in the solar system, minus Mercury, spend most of their orbit closer to the winged messenger, quotations is a link, than any other planet. Sounds impossible? This is how they worked it out. The results are based on a technique called the point circle method, PCM. In essence, a mathematical equation that takes the orbits of two planets as circular, concentric, and coplana, and calculates the average distance between the two planets as they orbit the sun. From the PCM, we notice that the distance between two orbiting bodies is at a minimum when the inner orbit is at a minimum, the author explains. The observation results in what we call the whirly dir <laughs> the whirly dirly corollary, named after an episode of the cartoon Rick and Morty. For two bodies with roughly coplanar concentric circular orbits, the average distance between the two bodies decreases as the radius of the inner orbit decreases. It's clear from this corollary and from the table that Mercury average orbital radius of point, uh, 0 0.39 AU, not Venus, average radius of 0 0.72 AU, is the closest planet to Earth on average. AU is astronomical units, the distance between Earth and the Sun. Another video. I'm going to continue. To test their hypothesis, they built a computer simulation that tracked the position of all four planets over a 10,000 year period and calculated the average distance between them. The result of the simulation differed from traditional calculations, determined by subtracting the average radius of the inner orbit from the average radius of the outer orbit by a staggering 300%, yet differed from the PCM calculations by a relatively insignificant 1%. It found that the average distance between Earth and Venus was 1.136 astronomical units, or 0 0.28 on the old method. In comparison, the average distance between the Earth and Mercury was 1.039 astronomical units, or 0 0.61 on the old method. The hypothesis has yet to be submitted to a peer-reviewed paper and will no doubt be put through a thorough cross-examination by experts in the field. But the authors have already noted some possible uses for their newly devised PCM equation. 
With the right assumptions, PCM could possibly be used to get a quick estimate of the average distance between any set of orbiting bodies, the authors wrote. Perhaps it can be useful for quickly estimating satellite communication relays for which signal strength falls off with the square of distance. In any case, at least we know that Venus is not our closest neighbor and that Mercury is everybody's. Uh, this is a fun one for me. It's got a really good um, uh, point to it and that in science we look to find answers we come up with new theories, new hypotheses, and we put them through a test. So now these people come up with the PCM, and they're noticing uh, differences in the old methods they used, and are calculating um, uh, new uh, measurements. And the article says clearly it hasn't been peer-reviewed, and that experts are going to look to tear it apart in a way. And that's the great thing about science. The scientific method. Unlike religion and that way of thinking, they don't delve into the uh, answers. And all that gibbly God, blah, 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 bullshit about, oh, whatever, God and then therefore religion and therefore science, whatever. I'll give the credit due for the history of what religion might have been in the past and helped in certain circumstances, but in my opinion, it's no longer needed. I've discussed that here and there, but I don't make a major issue of my site or of my channel. But in reaching out with stories like this, just get people's mind going. It, it's really interesting to me that we still are finding or trying to find new ways to calculate our orbits, to figure out who's our closest neighbor, and to put it on a time scale like 10,000 years. I did another article on the stages of our universe, on how black holes work. This is going to be the foundation for Science is the foundation for our future. It's it's the key to our survivability in that sense. We will have clues and directions and pointing in to evidence rather than beliefs and other things. And we will have to determine the course of our galaxy and our solar system if we eventually mature and become... I don't know, there's lots of cool scientists and philosophers who have like a gradient, you know, we're at a zero level civilization. Well, if we ever going to continue and we evolve and we grow, we're going to outlive our planet if we get there. And these are the foundations for that. I mean, you could see it in a sci-fi way. You know, uh, generation ships that are traveling to other galaxies, you know, where are you going to go to where you can settle down and repopulate a planet? giving you the most time where you calculate the orbits and it's just something that really excites me, gets me, um, you know, thinking about things in a, a different way. I'm not a real science nerd in that sense of, uh, understanding everything, but I read an article and it just, I don't know. It's, it's a way of, for me, like, I remember really love looking through a telescope when I was a kid and going into the places where you saw the stars and that's a thing that I think we miss. I think it's good to touch base with science and what what's going on, the little tidbits we're learning, uh, the things we're learning we did wrong. Uh, maybe this will replace the old method. And just like we are figuring out with the black holes now, as we first got our first image, sort of, of one, um, and our probes that have gone beyond uh, expectations and reached further frontiers of our solar system and beyond now, we're looking to go to the moon again. If they, you know, if they keep to their schedule, we've got probes going to Mars. I think it's a exciting time, especially in this weird fucking place we're in right before elections, uh, this pandemic, lockdowns are being threatened again. We're going to be stuck in the house, or if you want bigger things to think about and explore, science and astronomy, space, uh, just the wonders of the universe we live in. And articles like this are a gateway for me. Maybe it gets a little inner child in me. 
But it's weird to know we might have a new closest neighbor. I hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe and healthy. Um, use your common sense and I would implore people to vote, even though I understand people are so fed up with this system. But science doesn't let me down. I hope it intrigues everybody. Take care. Till next time. Bye-bye.